What would make your life a little better right now? A bit of money, not millions, only about $7,000. I work for a former foster support services org. Throughout the pandemic, we were contracted to administer federally granted dollars for pandemic relief. Each young person was eligible for up to $7,000 per fiscal year. That goes away in September, and I'm genuinely concerned over the consequences. For some young people it meant they could finally get ahead enough to buy a car or have an actual emergency fund. For others it meant they weren't homeless. No matter what group, it was life-changing money to have access to and in September, it's just gone. $7,000 is no insignificant amount of money to most people. Any info on this? Does it only apply to former foster children? Each state is going to handle these funds differently. They're federal dollars that are administered by the state, and in our case contracted by the state to us. For our state it's for young people that are eligible for educational training vouchers, which means they were in foster care for at least one day one or after their 16th birthday, are less than 26 years old, and are enrolled in a Title IV accepting secondary education program, college, university, professional cert program, etc. In our state too though, all older youth service providers have a pool of COVID dollars that they can issue as they see fit. Those COVID dollars and our COVID dollars come from the same pool technically, so if a young person received $500 from their UIS provider, they're only eligible for $6,500 from us. Sleep. I need more sleep. If anyone finds a solution for staying asleep more than 4 to 5 hours, please inform me. Falling asleep is easy, but sleeping through the night? It's rare. Same here, I'm exhausted most of the time, and look forward to bed. But if I manage to fall asleep within an hour, I still wake up around 2 to 3 am for no apparent reason. Guess my ancestors were the ones tending to the fires. 2 shift sleep. I read some article that people in middle ages did that and it was a normal thing. That's called, biphasic and polyphasic sleep. Years ago. A friend and I were both unemployed at the same time and came across this. We tried all the different combinations of polyphasic sleep, using each other to help with waking up on time. This got especially difficult during the Uberman trial, which you were awake for 3.6 hours and sleep for only 33 minutes, 6 times a day. We managed to get almost three weeks into that part of the Uberman, but ultimately ended when we both passed out and didn't wake up for hours later. Your brain starts to do really weird things when you get to that point. You feel like you're always in a dream state, where the lines of reality and hallucinations start to blur. Even though you're still getting those micro naps so your brain can perform its regenerative functions, you really don't know what's going on. Under a week or possibly two is doable. After that good luck. A shorter commute. Wasting two hours of my day just driving to and from work blows. It's not gonna give you your time back, but do you listen to something while you drive? I drive a lot for work and podcasts and audiobooks keep me sane all day long. You could find something you'd like to learn more about and get an education in your topic of choice while you're stuck behind the wheel. In two hours a day, you could even learn a new language. Jesus, I sound like a shill for Audible. Seriously though, audio is a great way to use all that time. Great suggestion. I usually listen to NPR while driving because it keeps me up to date on news and current events but I feel like I could probably get more out of choosing my own content, podcasts, audiobooks, and whatnot. I'm going to try out some new stuff and see if that brightens up my commute a bit. Listen to stuff you should know. Way better than NPR and just makes you an all-around cooler and more informed person. I work in a lab and do podcasts all day. They are massively successful and have been doing it for like 15 years. They cover a huge net of topics. I used to search for the ones that might interest me, but some of the most mundane stuff turns out to be the coolest a lot of times. Friends 
especially local friends. I have some online slash long distance friends, who are great but they just aren't the same as someone who is near you. Same. I haven't hugged someone that didn't need me cause they were my kid haven't had a beer with a buddy said hello to anyone but the cashier since October 2021 I'm so lonely I miss playing music with people board games hugs grilling things and messing up be well. This. Just being able to go out and have food slash drink with a friend. I miss it. For all of you, Bumble Friends is a good place to start. Often you'll find people who are here on vacation, but they're also also locals just looking to meet people. Especially since everyone has started working from home. All the best. Someone to talk to and who cares. Same man. I'm getting pretty sick of nobody caring if I'm alive or not. I care. What's going on? Is everything alright? Sorry I went dark there for a while. I had to go clear my mind so I went and spent time with some of my cousins. I've just kinda been in a downward spiral of depression for a while. I'm on meds and they definitely do help but they aren't a cure. I've had some pretty dark days recently. I completely understand I too take meds for GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder, and I know what it's like to just feel hopeless. It's a great thing you had a chance to spend time with family however. My best advice is remember that the bad days don't define your growth and your healing. You are strong and you have a lot to look forward to. If you need to talk I am here. Thank you very much. I will keep that in mind and same goes for you. I'm always here. If my back pain goes away. If it's an environmental issue i.e. sitting in a chair a lot then this video helped me out a lot. I do this routine every morning, coupled with sleeping with a pillow between my knees, sleeping on my side, or under my knees, sleeping on my back, this helps align the spine during the night even on a crappy mattress. If it's an injury then I don't think this will help. Sorry. Just came here to share this vid. Changed my world. Do it 3 to 4 times a week and once before I fly. Really changed my life. Living with back pain affects so many aspects of your life, mentally and physically. It made me really old, young. This video basically fixed that for me. L4, L5 bulging disc. Does this help with upper back issues? I have unbelievable unrelenting stiffness straight across my shoulders and upper back and I cannot get it fixed for love nor money. Massage helps for about 15 minutes, and then it tightens right back up. I just tried it and it made my upper back worse ike if I did it wrong or what but I will not do that again. I have the same problem no matter what I'm always tensed up in my shoulders slash upper back and nothing has helped. Dang it, I was hopeful. This has been going on for several years now and the muscles get so tight they pull down on my face. I feel like I'm permanently frowning. My doctor and my physical therapist say it's from years and years of carrying my stress there and now that I'm older, 50, it's taking its toll. I feel like they may be right because usually I feel perfectly normal when I first wake up, it's not until I start thinking about the day's responsibilities that it starts to tighten up. The only thing that helps is cannabis, and of course that's not legal in my state. I have this issue and have some luck with this hard foam neck pillow thing I bought from Amazon. It helps stretch and relax the muscles in that area and I notice a difference when I use it regularly. It looks like it's called rest cloud neck and shoulder relaxer cervical traction device. You may have already tried something like this but I bought it couldn't hurt to share since it's relatively cheap and helped me. Thanks. I ordered it. I'll try anything. I have a neck stretcher thing, you put it around your neck and blow it up with a little pump so it stretches your neck, reminds me of tribal women with the long necks that I used to see in National Geographic when I was a kid, but it doesn't do much for me. I've looked at getting a TENS machine but haven't tried that yet. I did do some PT last winter and they taught me stretches with some bands, that helps a bit but it's always very temporary. 
This is going to sound ridiculous but a lacrosse ball on the tendons and muscles around my neck for the MFR has done what nothing expensive could. I used to get insane tension headaches from it that would prevent me from working. I have one in my car, my shower, my desk, by my bed, and in the living room. Damn thing works wonders. Something about the firmness and grip. No other ball has the same effect. The end of my epilepsy. TBH that would make my life much better. Super fucking relatable. I just commented about my shitty seizures and auras. I'm sorry you go through it too frown. Stiff, convulsive hugs from me to you. I have a drug induced seizure disorder. Basically abused drugs to the point I now have seizures. I feel for everyone genetically predisposed BC I can accept I did this to myself but. Y'all had no choice. Much love. Which ones caused this? Which drugs did you use that caused that? Benzopines. Gabargics. Gabapentin, Lyrica, Baclofen, Xanax, Clonopin. These meds mixed together create a breeding ground for seizures based on taking and cessation of consumption. I can elaborate if you want. Basically Lyrica is an anti-seizure med that is used off Rx for depression. Cessation and use lowers or threshold for seizures. Coming Agaba drug, Lyrica, with Clonopin, a benzo, and stopping either equals big seizures. Gabas lower your threshold, cessation of benzos lowers your threshold. Great, now you have seizures and psychosis and tremors etc etc etc. These meds and combos can literally kill you. Especially if you quit cold turkey, which I did. Broke my nose cracked my skull crashed my car. Months of hell. My friends reaching out to me for a change. It's quite the kick in the gut when you realize the people you consider friends just can't be bothered to maintain the friendship. Realized I was the one always asking if they want to hang out or come over and they never invited me over or made plans with me. So I thought I'd stop to see how long it would take. Despite still chatting over texts, we haven't hung out since May this year. I did the same experiment last October. No one reached to me for 4 months not even a text. When I texted them what's up they just ghosted me. Now I don't have friends I feel kinda shitty but I sleep well because I know that no one will exploit me and I don't have fake friends. Every time I try this experiment, I end up with the same two friends who even though we don't always live in the same country, can always maintain our bond. Everyone else I have met and made friends with throughout my life just sort of fades away unless I am consistently pursuing them. Too much work. Nope. Exactly. Good for you that at least you have two loyal friends. I wish that I was lucky enough to meet someone who would be genuine and would reach out to me as well. You will one day. Follow your passions and I'm sure they'll come out of the woodwork, having been waiting on you for years. I literally just met a lifelong bestie two years ago and I'm well past school, the easiest place to find long term friends, age and a huge introvert. I hope you keep trying and wish you luck. If my wife no longer had breast cancer. Survivor from 2020. My husband of 15 years walked out on me. God bless you for taking care of your wife. God speed her recovery. I am so sorry you went through that on top of fighting cancer. I heard recently that it's extremely common for men to leave their wives after a cancer diagnosis, which blows my mind. Heartbreaking and infuriating. Fuck that. My grandfather, my mom, and my wife, at 28, all had breast cancer and it's the worst. I shaved her head, gave her shots, took her to the hospital, and stayed. We are now married 20 years. What? I can't fucking imagine that. Common? That seems horrible beyond the pale to me, like disowned and disavowed by your entire family and all your friends level of bad to me. If I had a friend that did this I'd be tempted to kick the living shit out of him not just never speak to him again. If tinnitus could fuck off. Audiologist here.
Sorry for you. I just wish there was a cure already. It sucks. I have tinnitus and have never found it much of a bother. I didn't even know what it was until someone pointed it out. And I was like ooh, that's what the ringing is. It also helps me sleep because I can focus on it to ignore the noises from outside. Mine isn't just ringing though. I have distortions in music and such too. My hearing is fucked. Not saying that there aren't people who have it way worse than me. But this fucking sucks. If I knew. I'd never assaulted my ears like this. Well, mine is due to meningitis from when I was a baby, so I've had it all my life, which is probably why it doesn't bother me e I don't know any different. Yeah I understand, I've had mild visual snow my entire life, so I haven't known what it is like to see completely normally without the static. It doesn't bother me as much as this though, because I have had good hearing. It was me who ruined it. A loving partner I guess. You and me both. There you go, you found each other. Someone to love and who loves me back, more than friendship. We don't realize that this lack of relationship leave holes in our soul and. Now I feel I lack mental health. Well, my therapists say that I need to be whole. The renowned love guru in my country is also said that I need to be whole. After heartbreak and depression it is fine and I can be whole and alone. But man have someone I love to snuggle and cuddle would be nice. My friend friend offer it too but it different. Wish I could have someone to truly snuggle someday but I need to be whole. Edit, my family have cats. I cuddle and snuggle them but they despise it. Still nice though. You can try to be whole while you try to find company, it's okay. Just be mindful and try to be a good person. I think having the company of the friend is the best thing to do. I just accepted this as a possibility for me today. I've been trying to better myself for the past few years mentally and physically. It's exhausting but worth it. I finally feel ready to put myself out there and try to allow someone into my life while continuing to grow and get better. No more periods ever. Getting an IUD can eliminate getting a period ever again, but it can come with other complications. I had an IUD and never stopped bleeding. One whole year of it bleeding and being told it'll settle once your body is used to it. Worst year of my life. I am so sorry you had to go through that. In the US I had a female doctor tell me deadpan that if I got the arm implant one, they wouldn't take it out unless I bled continuously for at least 9 weeks. I thought she was high off her mind and told her I'd cut it out of me myself if I bled for 2, at the time I had really light periods of 2 to 3 days. That woke her up. But holy hell a full year. That might be the worst thing I've ever heard of. You're so strong for pulling through. It only came out because I went to a walk-in clinic and said take it out or I'll do it right here and now. Looking back, absolutely stupid that I just went along with the it'll be fine eventually waited out rather than advocating for myself. If anyone reads this, I hope they take from this to push when they know something is wrong and the doctors aren't listening. That's absolutely horrible they said that to you. You pay to see them, you'd think they would listen a little better. For the last 6 years of my career, I've advanced a lot but my salary has stayed the same. I would love to land a job double my pay right now. That would solve basically every bit of my problems as I would be able to save half of my yearly salary per year which would be amazing since I'm fairly frugal with my money. Polish up your resume, work with a coach on your interviewing skills, and start applying. Now is the time for workers to find fair compensation. I've been working on it and applying for a good 6 months. I have a feeling holding a job and trying to find another one is making recruiters think I'll do the same to them. I might have to lie and say I don't have a job on my resume. Independent recruiting firms probably shouldn't care, and often go after already employed individuals. I have recruiters reach out to me, 
unsolicited, and got a different job for that reason. They found me through LinkedIn, even though my profile hadn't been updated in a while. Meanwhile, none of the places I actually applied to followed up with me. I work in IT and there's a lot of movement in this field. What kind of work do you do? I'm currently a programmer on the ServiceNow platform. I have a four-year degree in IT. But I've done graphic design, front-end development, web content development, and now ServiceNow back-end development. I'm pretty much a full-stack JavaScript dev. I've been looking to get into React development but I don't have work experience with it outside of like two years worth of building stuff and learning on Udemy slash YouTube. So I know it, but it's hard to get people to give me a chance. I know a bunch of other stuff too since I've been doing this so long. I just don't get paid a lot. I actually had a recruiter reach out to me today and he said he'll pay me 35 an hour. I only make 22 right now so that's perfect for me. We'll know more tomorrow, hopefully. Did you enjoy the video? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to share your favorite moments from this video. With that being said, have a good day.